Good evening. The news gang is here, and tonight, are you better off? Empty pockets and angry minds. Why the cost of living is going through the roof and incomes at rock bottom. Also on the show, ready for the match or not, IBC begins jogging on the sidelines, but where the assistant referees will look at the fixtures and the playground. Plus, let the show begin. The politics of corruption, a tour that is not, or is it? We are talking about Ukambani and the president's big headache. On the kicker tonight, an old to a fallen giant. Yvonne takes on a search for the author of our economic problems. Gashuri punches in with a wish, a wish list, I should say, in Kiamba. Corruption and the ballot grace the memo, while on the angle tonight, a cry for our beloved police. Lakini mimi atiyosema mimi nataka endorsement. Sitaki endorsement ya huru. Eh? Kile mimi nitataka ni kura yake. Eh? Peke yake. Nikiwa kama mtamwomba hiyo kura. Nikiwa mimi nitataka kuzimama. Yes. Ndaomba kura yake. So that uh, ODM leader Raila Odinga speaking this morning to Radio Citizen he later gave another interview to uh, Sam Ogena, uh, which aired uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, Njoki Shege is uh, doing sign language interpretation for us tonight, and we'll come back to uh, that Raila interview in a moment, ladies and gentlemen. I just remembered, Linus, that it is actually the eve of the 10th indep independence South anniversary Sudan. for South Sudan. And, yes. uh, yeah. Yes. You and I covered that. Jamila, I think you were there. I was there too. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes, and Jamila too was there. Okay, yeah, but uh, well, you what? Uh, what? Were not. What? What? <laughs> but, but but obviously you followed the ten years there, and it's been quite. Uh, there. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 All right, good. but um, we will uh, we congratulate them. Hope mm -hmm. that they can uh, sort out all the issues mm -hmm. that have been going on there. Yeah. Um, but I think we can swing from South Sudan to South Africa mm -hmm. because the man on the screen behind us, um, here they would say, is a guest of the state. But mm -hmm. Linus, you spent some time there. I don't mean as a guest of the state, but in South <laughs> Africa. <laughs> Maybe you want to set the scene for us here. It's not that common, actually, um, in this part <clears throat> of the world for even a former president, let alone a sitting one, to have these kinds of problems. Joe, this is yet again an incredible s statement about the South African political and judicial environment uh, because this is a former president. And Jacob Zuma is not just a former president. He is also a liberation icon. Mm -hmm. This was the leader of Umkonto Wesizwe, the spear of the nation. He was basically in charge of the equivalent of Mau Mau uh, liberation uh, movement. And uh, the Umkonto Sizo was the armed wing of ANC. So in terms of who Jacob Zuma is, he is highly regarded among the Africans in South Africa. And was even jailed mm. during that time. And was even jailed by the way. during that time. Yeah. Yeah. So he's making a return to jail, but... For the wrong reasons as a statement yeah. about the South African uh, democratic values, about the independence of the judiciary. Remember, it would have been possible for him to barricade himself at home. He's got enough supporters, and you saw a lot of them dancing yeah. uh, in Kantla, his home, uh, capable of basically causing a national standoff. But eventually, he submitted and said, this is how the system works here. The South African judiciary is independent and everybody is above the law. Joe, I'm reminded by this incident of the 1970s incident involving uh, Paul Ngay, <laughs> one of Amazing. the <laughs> Kapenguria Six. Yeah. Mm. Uh, in terms of the liberation credentials, those who are our Zoomers, they were jailed by the colonial authorities because of fighting for our freedom. It would have been very easy for South Africans to go the Paul Ngay route. Paul Ngay started off on a very bad note because he was uh, accused of, uh, of, of corruption, basically. 
when he was minister, his wife was the supplier mm. and buyer of all the maize in the country through the national... The, the, the first maize scandal it was. <laughs> yes. So, so maize is a national uh, training program it's for it's corruption. <laughs> and, and, and it started us off in the 60s with, with Paul Ngei. Paul Ngei was actually supposed to be out of government. What did Jomo Kenyatta do? He pardoned, pardoned him. Then the second incident, involving the same minister, Paul Ngei, because of Kapenguria. He was mentioned in the death of a daughter of fellow cabinet minister, Jackson Angaine. Uh, the daughter was named uh, Captain Judy Angaine, who happened, according to uh, different chronicles, to have a relationship with Paul Ngei, the minister, and she dies mysteriously. And again, he survives because liberation was worn by those who fought for it as an impunity cap that made them to be above the law. Mm -hmm. If Zuma was a Kenyan, Zuma will not be in jail tonight. Mm -hmm. and, and Yvonne, um, I, I know that um, you followed this story of the Guptas mm -hmm. that uh, uh, is part of the bundle of problems that Zuma has tonight. I think uh, uh, it, it would be interesting uh, because I, I think, if I am not mistaken, that this is a scandal that, in a sense, mainstreamed, at, at least in recent times, what has been called state capture. capture. Yes, yes, and that's been sort of the trending word um, in South Africa. And, you know, just to pick up from what um, uh, Linus was saying about him being, you know, a freedom hero, and then right when they now get independence and he gets into government, uh, you know, he's clouded by controversy. Even before we get to the case of the Guptas, uh, Zuma has had quite a checkered political career. You remember, in fact, President Thabo Mbeki fired him yeah. as, uh, you know, deputy president because of, uh, you know, a scandal, uh, you know, at the time. And then there was, um, you know, the favors that were being doled out and the manner in which this Gupta family really controlled the government for the nine years that Jacob Zuma uh, was in power. And, you know, that is interestingly what brings us to his imprisonment now in contempt of court because um, the constitutional court you know commonly known as the Concord in, in South yeah. Africa, mm -hmm. very powerful, had actually ordered him to appear before another commission mm -hmm. that is investigating the state capture by mm -hmm. the Gupta family. And, you know, he refused, writing, in fact, a scathing 21-page yeah. letter uh, to the commission talking about how, you know, that was uh, an infringement on his rights and, you know, tying his, uh, his own troubles to that of, of the country and its history. Um, and, you know, I found that, you know, fairly interesting. But there was also, you know, some other things about you know the court and and the historic manner that you can tie to some of the things that we've heard here. So we've said here on this panel several times that when you hear the judge's first lines, you know you know how this is going to go. Um, I want to read. Um, an extra excerpt from the first words of, of the acting Chief Justice Sisi uh, Kampepe, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, and he began the groundbreaking judgment with these words. He said, it is indeed the lofty and lonely work of the judiciary, impervious to public commentary and political rhetoric, to uphold, protect, and apply the constitution and the law at any and at all costs. You don't say all those you, lofty yeah, things and, and, then and then let you, someone yes, go. But, no. but, so but, for me, that was uh, what was but, interesting. But interesting, that, yeah. Jamila, that this, there is this case, this scandal that is being investigated, and it's not even uh, really what this gentleman is, is, is going in for, mm -hmm. but the fact that he refused to mm -hmm. yes. submit, submit himself, himself to give witness mm -hmm. or, or bas basically uh, testify or as it were being grilled, whatever that terminology might be, but he, didn't he refused to submit himself um, to a legal judicial yeah. body. And that is what... Um, it's not even an actual yeah. in fact, you know, criminal it's not, yes. yeah. In fact, the, they say that the former president, I think, testified only once at the inquiry and then refused to appear subsequently. And you talked about how he had written a scathing yeah. uh, like an no, constitutional cause, basically. Yes. Yeah. They say this guy is not appearing, he's in, in contempt, and this guy is Wakamfunga for 15 months. And he was given five days until Wednesday night to appear in court, uh, to, to, to go to, to, to jail, otherwise the police minister was going to arrest him. And, and, and Lena talked about how at Nkandla, 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they had there were armed people, hundreds of them with armed guns and machetes, but he chose to live quietly and it speaks about how much he means I think to South Africans considering of what we talk about him being a liberation hero and having been being jailed I think in Robben Island. Mm. But then you talk about what the judges said. And um, they, I was reading somewhere and they say they did not simply find him in contempt, mm. but spelt out the ways in which the former president had lied, yes. sought to mislead the public, and ultimately tried to destroy the rule of law. Mm. This is somebody who was president of South Africa until uh, 2018. Mm. Nine years. He came after Thabo Mbeki. And during that period, you talked about how he had all these scandals, the Guptas. There was even an arms one, yeah. I think, in 1999. Uh, 1990, yes. yes. Uh, the arms deal. Yeah. The arms deal. But then now, what is interesting is that it has happened Jacob Zuma is in jail. He's spending the night in jail. He's a former president of Africa. And we talk about how this really happens. Mm. And it's because of contempt of court. Something that happens here in Kenya on a All regular basis. Court orders are ignored. Court orders are not deemed to be important. And nothing ever happens. We should learn from South Africa. Uh, Fra Francis, you cover a lot of politicians. It is unthinkable <laughs> in our context, uh, context, let alone even a former president. I mean, <laughs> sometimes even a member of parliament, mm. even an MC, yeah. actually can cause a real standoff. And you actually don't even know what to do. And this is a good lesson that uh, institutions, when they work, their decisions ought and must be respected. And a nation that does not have strong, independent institutions whose instructions can be respected, such as the judiciary, and even, let's say, IABC, Parliament, and all other agencies, then you run a country that is problematic. I want to imagine, if it was in Kenya, <laughs> there would have been found a reason in one way or another, to make sure that that um, court order is not complied with. Um, haven't we seen guys who have been ordered to appear before ESCC for grilling, for investigation of a, one corruption scandal or another, and they went there with hundreds, if not thousands, of their supporters, and when they came out, they told us in those news conferences that my people are being targeted. Um, it would have been very easy for Jacob Zuma to say, my people are being targeted. But growth of institutions and growth of a democracy in a country is, is of paramount importance. Um, I think it's a good lesson uh, for us as a country and for politicians in power and out of power that how you use power when you're in it is also very important because when you're out of it, um, some of your actions can follow you. And uh, when they follow you, you unfortunately will be alone, not with anyone who was cheerleading you while in power. And, and we've seen even here in Kenya, some of the powerful governors, former governors, former MPs and former cabinet ministers, when they're taken to court, they have this many lawyers and this many supporters the first days. But as the case progresses, they cut a forlorn figure in the corridors of justice. I, I just the lesson for for us and for all. Yeah, I just wanted to add, Joe, there's some things that are fairly similar. So, um, you know, Jacob Zuma had some very public outbursts and he made some very personal attacks against the judges. Mm -hmm. He talked about their honesty and their integrity. We've heard that here before. Um, when we talk of contempt of, of, uh, of court, how many times have several senior government officials been held in contempt for things like um, persons who uh, sued the and, state and for torture and sentenced to, and sentenced certain, to time, certain times in court, months, and, and, and they're still walking free. I, I think there's, there's a case of a couple of individuals who sued the state for torture. Uh, they were awarded uh, some uh, compensatory damages. Government is yet to pay. They were held in contempt. Uh, you retired know, teachers, uh, retired you remember? Retired teachers as well. Yeah, yeah, um, well. But you know, so. so all of these things that are very similar to what's happening here. So, um, sure. but, but it's I think, I think in a sense, I mean, the, 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 what, what turns out for me, Yvonne, even as you mentioned that, is the fact that this is something that was looked at as a major test mm. for the, uh, the, the constitutional uh, democracy that South Africa says it is. Yeah. And I think uh, a big statement has been made in terms of uh, respect for the rule of law. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that strikes me is that it is not the constitutional court that went mm -hmm. to get him. They just issued an order and the guy submits himself. And if he wasn't going to do that, there was actually going, it's not the court that was going to go after him. Right. And so the, the way in which the the rule of law functions. There is someone who will make the pronouncement and, and then there's else. someone who will uh, implement, implement it. it. Mm. In our case, 
the judiciary has made many pronouncements, uh, and, and there will be statements like those ones. But remember those words you were reading? Mm. The courts are impervious. Mm -hmm. And then the entire system acts in tandem. And I think that is something, a lesson, a powerful one that we can pick from here. Because South Africa, I think, has um, um, t blazed the trail in many respects in terms of um, uh, trying as much as they can to entrench the, the, the new constitutional order that they, they gave themselves in, 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 in 1994. And I think that's something that uh, uh, we need to think about. Yeah, Joe, there's yeah. always this expectation, sorry, Linus, that the arms of government will work together. Though they retain their independence, they will work together for the sake of growth of democracy and rule of law and administration of justice. The judiciary does not have police officers of its own. Um, the parliament does not have police officers of its own. It relies on implementation from the, gov from the executive. But if those orders touch on current members or former members of the executive, the real test is on the executive to implement them. Number one. Number two, doesn't mean that when judges make decisions, they cannot be questioned. They can be questioned. They can be criticized, but in a respectful manner. And if you're dissatisfied right with their right. decisions, yeah. then make an appeal at the next uh, higher court. But not what we see being done here, where if, yeah, you, if, if like you disagree with the decision, the then it becomes... Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay, Linus, you are going to have the last word here because we need to move on. Uh, okay, and the last word is about the institutionalism culture that obviously South Africa has demonstrated mm. because this is yet another first. And uh, it should be remembered, for example, that this country, South Africa, recalled a sitting president, mm -hmm. uh, and the term yeah. is recall, yeah. uh, whereby the party, ANC, said, President Tabombeki, you'll be redeployed, yeah, and, and you've been recalled as president of the state. And um, the and country the went through Zuma. that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was drama-free. There was, there was no bloodshed. There were no demonstrations. Nothing happened. So uh, today they've sent a president, a former president, uh, to jail. And, and this is something that, that is also very, very uh, interesting, mm. a first in a way. And finally, Joe, I mean, I, I just wanted to tell you a bit about uh, Zuma, because uh, we, I, I covered him as uh, uh, when he was the chair of the Burundi peace process. And uh, it's interesting, because he's a very charismatic person, mm. very, very charismatic. Yeah. He is underrated, but he's a, pol a person with amazing political skills. Mm. You see him singing, working mm. the crowds. Mm. Mm. I mean, he is the man who actually caused support, yeah. the recalling of Tabo Mbeki, mm -hmm. who, intellectually speaking, mm. is, is, is a much, much superior. Like uh, day and night. Yes. Yeah, day, day, day and night. But, but this smart political operative knew how to use the party system, knew how to use the provinces and the base of the party to actually rise up the ranks. Mm -hmm. Zuma was understated. I mean, in terms of his abilities, this should not have been one of the presidents of South Africa, but he was. He, he became one because he is a wily operator. Yeah. Um, how did he fall? I think he fell because he was taken advantage of largely. Mm. Taken advantage of by, by, by people who do exactly the same things here in Kenya, where yeah. you access political leaders so that you are the supplier of this uh, mm -hmm. and that to, to, to government. Services, yeah. A lot of the things that we do here, for example, in Kenya, would cause a lot of inquiries in South Africa, just looking by what ended up being things that raised questions and even things that tonight sent Jacob Zuma to jail. As I take a break, Joe, last one, mm -hmm. 10 seconds. Jacob Zuma is in jail and South Africans are going on with their lives kamakawaida. Yes, he had his supporters, some who went to Nkandla, and he, he gave himself up peacefully, but life is going on. We're not seeing protests across the country. We're not seeing um, maybe malalamishi from people. Life is going on. And I think to some extent for many of South Africans, they look at this in terms of the institutions working. There has been concerns in South Africa of many years of impunity in high places in government and individuals who are in, in, in power. And for them, I think this is an instance of where now we have our judicial 
judiciary system working, and even if you're president or not, this is how it should be. Come on, mefanya makos. And, and I think it's a lesson for, for all of us. And as we do that, let's take a break. We'll be back with more. <laughs> <laughs>